What is up guys, welcome back to another video, my name is OneTap, and I don't know if you guys already noticed, but I got a new mic, so hopefully my mic sounds better than before, because I remember listening back to my other clips, my mic from sounded pretty bad, so right now I'm kind of taking like a mini break because of the Minecraft grind, that kind of stressed me out a bit, so I'm just taking a break, but right now, I just compiled all four parts into one big video, and don't worry, I will definitely be continuing this series. I hope you guys enjoy this video for the people that haven't seen it. If you've already seen this whole series, you really don't have to watch this if you don't want to. Just stay tuned because my new microphone will hopefully greatly improve my video quality in the future. What is up guys, welcome back to another video and today I'm going to be doing a different type of video. I don't think I've ever done like a Minecraft kind of playthrough series but this is my first attempt at it. So today I'm going to be trying hardcore Minecraft out, it's pretty much where if you die your world gets deleted forever. No matter how long you've spent on like all your builds and all your farms and everything, it's all gone. So I'm just gonna try to see if I can make it through 100 days without dying, without dying. And yeah, this is my very first attempt in Minecraft Hardcore. This was also inspired by Luke the Notable. I'll put his channel in the description. So as you just saw right there, we saw some iron at the spawn, so I was pretty lucky. I'm gonna be getting tons of wood because, you know, that's what you always gotta do when you first start off. All right, it is currently day one, and I just made my first wooden pickaxe of the whole series, and we're gonna go get some stone over here so we can make ourselves a stone pickaxe and then grab the iron. After mining for a bit, I got a little bit of coal and some iron, and I decided to make myself a full um, a full stone set, so I made myself the pickaxe, the axe, and the sword, and also the shovel. I went to go chop down some more trees, and when it came back, my iron was done smelting. So I picked up my furnace, and I decided to craft an iron pickaxe. I also decided to make some armor, so I went with the chest plate. I killed a bunch of animals. I decided that my goal for day one was to at least get a house done, so I began building. It was pretty ugly because I used spruce for every single block, but you know, we all gotta start somewhere. I also didn't have any glass yet, so I just used planks to fill in the, the windows before I could get glass. I then went outside and started planting all the saplings that I've gathered from tree chopping from before. Time flew by, and before I knew it, it was already dark, so I crafted torches from the coal I had left over, and I started placing torches around my house. There was a skeleton freaking following me, so I decided it was probably better if I just stayed inside my house, blocked it up, and just waited the night out. It was day two and it was finally light outside. Today I decided my goals were to get some fish, and also to mine a lot. I killed a lot of fish. The rest of the day I decided to build like a little mine right next to my house so that I can go down and get ores whenever I needed to. And yeah, the rest of the day was pretty much just me gathering up coal and iron. I went home, crafted a furnace, and then I cooked up all the fish that I caught from earlier today. Alright, it is day 3 and my goal today was to get a bed and maybe start a farm. So first I crafted up myself a full iron set from the iron I made yesterday, and then I went out to go look for a sheep. I spotted a sheep almost right away and I went straight to go kill it. Then I started working on the farm, and I also made some improvements to the house. It was day 4 and I walked outside, and I saw this chode tree right outside of my house, so I decided to go chop it down. Later when I went mining that day, two creepers pulled up on me, and I thought I was already gonna die, and it was only day 4, but thankfully they didn't really hurt me that much. Then I found this sick ravine, and all I did for the next couple of days was just go mining and look for a bunch of ores. There was tons of coal everywhere inside the ravine, and there was even some lapis and also a mine shaft, so I guess I found the gold mine. I also ended up finding my first patch of diamonds. It was only a three vein, but it's okay, because I found an eight right after that. I started smelting up the iron and gold I got from my mining trip, and I also got some diamonds and lapis, so I think that mining trip went pretty well, but I also mined for a pretty long time. Day seven, and I completely forgot about my wheat farm, so I went to go harvest it. I also went and got tons of birch and turned most of it into planks. I decided today I was going to start building a brand new house, because my old house just... It wasn't cutting it for me anymore, so I started digging out an area and I also started laying down some planks for where the foundations were going to be. I finally finished up my foundation and it was already dark. So I looked back and I think it looked pretty good. So then I just ran back to my house before any zombies or any skeletons could come kill me. 
Day 8 was just tree chopping. It went well into day 9. While I was chopping down some wood, I saw these dudes next to my house and I was so confused and they looked scary so I just ran away. I went to go check if they were there later and they were still there so I didn't know what to do. I just ran inside my house and just shut the door. It was day 10 and I was pretty excited that I made it this far. I built a little house and a farm and also started work on my second house. And yeah, a lot of a lot of you guys would probably do a lot better than me, but I was pretty proud of what I had done so far. I started to work on the house even more. I also nearly died from taking so much fall damage from jumping off all these pillars. Building the house took a really long time. It took me many days and nights, and I even had to build through rain. On day 14, I was bored of building my house, so I came back home and I saw that all my wheat was ready, so I went in and harvested that. It was day 15, and I decided to adventure a little bit, and I came across a village in like, literally a minute. Like, that's the village, and back there is where my base is, like, it's super close, so that was pretty lucky. I went inside the village and robbed them of all of their belongings. I also brought some sheep and cows with me on the way back home. The next day, I built a little fence area where I could keep them. I lured them in, and there was a skeleton with an enchanted bow following me, and it was really scary, because he hit one of my cows, but it's all chill, because he died. I bred two of the cows, and got an achievement. I also forgot that I had the diamond pickaxe for this long, so I decided to actually get obsidian. I also created my nether portal that day as well. And I also made an enchantment table with the diamonds and obsidian that I had. Bro, I literally got so much wood today, dude. I had like four stacks of logs in my inventory. I also collected some chicken there. Oh my god! Oh, dude, oh my god! Bro, chill. There was a freaking spider trying to attack me while I was building out my new house. Like, I really wanted to finish my house early just so I could actually move in because I've been working on this house for multiple days and I just wanted to finish it once and for all so I just built this for literally like four days straight it took so long dude I was almost done with my house I was just hauling up the ground underneath to try to make like a little farm and then we can finally go back and do some adventuring and actually do some interesting stuff because I'm sure this was all pretty boring for you to watch did my hoe just break yes yes it did break what kind of question was that obviously my hoe broke what was I even saying Alright, with all that aside, welcome to the crib, boys. Just finished building a new house. Time to give a house tour. So as you can see on the outside, there's tons of nice bushes and leaves, as I use that a ton. Over to the left is a little bedroom. Pretty bland, just a bed and a room with glass. <laughs> now, right over here is my enchantment room, or area, I guess. It's not really a room because we're right outside. There's leaves, because I don't have books yet. Once I get books, I will replace those leaves. Up here is our storage room, and on the other side is like a crafting area. I'll probably put all my crafting stuff over there. And yeah, that's pretty much what the house is. And then down here is just the farm. I do not have a ladder yet, so I'm just gonna keep on taking fall damage till I decide to actually put a ladder there. So yeah, that's the house tour, boys. How did you like it? I thought it was pretty good. I organized all of my chests today, and I'm pretty proud of myself. I'm gonna try to stay as organized as possible in this let's play slash challenge, whatever this is. Later that night, I crept over to a villager's house, and I wanted to force him into a being a Fletcher so that I can rob him of all of his emeralds. Why are you bullying me? So I just closed off the door so he couldn't get out, and I ran away. I checked here tomorrow, and sure enough, he became a Fletcher, so now it is time to trade with him to get all of my emeralds. I completely forgot about the nether portal, so today I decided I was actually going to go in the nether, and I don't think I said anything about this, but I'm currently in the newest snapshot, 20w20a, or 20w20b, whatever it is, and there's the nether update, and it's very fire, so I go in the nether, I see gold, gold in the nether for the first time, it was very pog, so I went to go get that, and it dropped you nuggets, and it was weird, it dropped you like a couple of nuggets, but it was cool, I'm also loving the nether sounds, dude, the nether sounds, they sound so much better. So I got home from my nether trip, and I crafted up all of my materials that I got. I realized that I crafted quartz blocks. I don't think you can turn those back into actual quartz. You stupid. So I guess I got some I got some quartz blocks now for no reason. Today was traveling day, so I went out very far, and I, I spotted this really weird building that I've never seen before. I didn't know that these things even existed in vanilla Minecraft. So I went closer to it, and I realized that there was one of those 
pillager dudes apparently that's what they're called i looked them up and they were really scary because last time like they did like 3,000 hearts to me so i dipped out of there as fast as i could i kept on moving in the same direction and i came across one of these things it was like a broken nether portal i'm pretty sure this is new with a new snapshot and it looked super sick i've never seen like netherrack spawn like actually spawn in the overworld so there were two gold blocks so i went and snagged those the chest was cracked, there was a protection 1 helmet, a smite 5 sword, and there was a hoe with silk touch. Why is there a hoe with silk touch? What does that even do? Well anyway, I just kept on going, and I saw this like big group of cows. There's literally 10 cows in like one area, I've never seen as much. So I just went over there and just started clapping them all. 360 Ooga Booga Booga! He's still in the game here, he's gonna go all the way for it and that's a trade -off. Day 26, I was grinding a lot of trees as I needed all the sticks like that I could get so that I could trade with some villagers. So I was trading away, and bad things happened. Huh? I almost died, dude. I was at two and a half hearts. I did not want my whole series to end right there, so I was really freaking scared that I was about to die, so I just made sure there was no mobs around me. Next up, sheared some sheep, because this comment told me to get some shears, so shout out to you. Bred up some cows. They all love me, you already know, dude. I crafted some more books so I could actually start working on my enchantment area. I placed down some of the books, and I think I got 16 levels, let's see how much we get. This so area was 16 levels. So yeah, I got 16 levels, it's not much, but it'll be good for now. We also needed some sugarcane, so I decided to start making a sugarcane farm right underneath our base. There was an open area, so I thought it was a good spot. And these next couple of days was just me grinding out wood and trading it, and just that cycle going over and over again. Because I really needed to get emeralds. I also decided to sneak in this guy's house while he was sleeping, so I could actually close him up, and hopefully he won't escape. Came back the next day, and he was actually gone. I had no idea where he went. So I was really confused. I eventually did get someone in here, and we decided to turn him into a toolsmith. He had a freaking axe trade, though, which was going to be AIDS. I already know that this was going to suck. Yup, and that is what my inventory looked Bruh. like a couple minutes later. Yeah, I didn't know where to put them, so I just all threw them on the ground, and now there's just a huge pile of axes just laying on the ground. Well, the first thing I did was just kill a bunch of cows, because I really wanted that enchantment table, and also I didn't really, I didn't really get any much inspiration from that walk around to my old world, to be honest. So that was kind of a waste of time. Oh well, yeah, and here's a clip of me trying to flick on a zombie. Why are you bullying me? I'm also trying my best not to show you guys anything that's like boring to watch. But I got a cleric villager now. I also saw some iron, so I went to go pick that up. I didn't take any fall damage right there. I was really confused. Can someone please explain that to me in the comments why I didn't take fall damage? I also saw this really cool, like, weird mountainy hill thing over here next to my house, so I went to go check it out. And also, I just want to say that there's a lot of clips that I'm not showing because I just think they're kind of boring to watch, like me taming cows and, like, breeding them and getting leather and stuff. There's also a lot of coal here, I just realized that. Yeah, um, there's just a lot of clips I'm not showing, so I'm sorry if I'm, like, you just can't see everything. I just feel like it's not that entertaining to watch. It was a dark forest over there, so I should probably get that sometime, but I was just way too lazy right now. Finally finished up the bookcases. It should be a level 30 now. Yes, sir! Level 30 enchantments. This took way too long. I had an AFK for sugarcane and everything. I grabbed some lapis, and I was going to enchant my diamond pickaxe. Let's see what we got. Ooh, silk touch. That's actually really good. Nice. Damn, I'm breaking three silk touch. That's pretty insane. Let's go. I did a lot of trading, and I also leveled up my cleric to the next level. This was also the time when I realized that I probably shouldn't have gotten a uh, toolsmith like villager. I probably should have gotten like an armor or like a weaponsmith because I don't know why I really needed tools that much. After a bunch of grinding, I finally did give myself an armor villager, and I loved them up a bunch. As you can see in my inventory, I, it's just a complete mess of shields and just some chainmail and iron armor. It was it was a pretty bad mess. And also outside, there was also Bruh. a big pile of just chest plates sitting there. Day 34. It was a nice, beautiful morning, and I go upstairs. And I was like, oh shoot, okay then. Yeah, a creeper was literally right chilling up there. My reflexes saved my life. I would have been triggered if that exploded because he was right next to all of my chests and everything. That was a very intense moment. Alright, the next day I just went and got some more wood. 
traded in more sticks because you know I needed those emeralds kept on grinding and grinding I eventually got to the point where I could buy my very first piece of diamond armor so I decided to buy the diamond leggings for 14 emeralds it was actually on discount since I upgraded this kid so fast there we go cover me with diamonds achievement so I went home and dropped off all of those random stuff I had in my inventory and Bruh. I found out that my wood chest was actually full so I really needed to use all those sticks because I had so many sticks inside there Today was exploring the nether day because I completely forgot that this was actually 20w21b so there was there was another update and all the new things added like the warped forest and like all that stuff I don't really know much about it yeah also now that I have my silk touch pickaxe I could just mine this gold ore and it would actually give me the ore itself and not the nuggets and then I could smelt that inside the furnace and it would give me straight up ingots so that would save me a lot of time and mining so I saw this little like drop down over here and I decided to take the risky choice and it dropped down and I didn't really lose that much hearts so I was okay. But I really need to go down there anyway because I spawned up so high in the nether. After a while of exploring I came across one of these forests and there were these crimson roots and also these other weird looking mushrooms and they were called crimson funguses. I've never seen these before so this was really weird. Probably came from the new update. There was also these weird sounding trees and it sounded really weird and like nice at the same time kind of like an ASMR. I don't even know how to explain it. Just listen. Yeah, and those were called crimson stems. I have no idea how to grow these back on the overworld. I've seen people do it before. So if you guys know how to grow those crimson thingies in the overworld, just let me know in the comments. Also, I didn't know that these things actually hurt you. Like, I think they're called hoglins, and I, I don't know why they were hurting me, so I'm gonna go look it up in a second. Alright, so turns out you need to be wearing gold armor or something like that so they won't hurt you. I also found one of these green forests over here as well. I also saw an enderman in the nether, I didn't know these actually spawned in the nether and he was also carrying one of those like grass blocks. So I didn't know that those were even a thing here. I also saw a different type of tree as well. And there were also these like weird glowy melon things called shroom lights, I've never seen these before either. There were so many new things in this update, they looked like glowstone too. Finally returned back to the overworld after a really long time in the nether and I bought myself a diamond hoe because why not and also I had to level up my toolsmith anyway. I also found another Fletcher in town so I just turned him into another stick trade and just used some leftover sticks from my chests. Also went back and got myself some diamond boots so now I had half of my diamond set already. I ended the day off with just harvesting some wheat and it was really satisfying. I was getting kind of bored of all the grind just to get diamond tools and armor so I can go fight the ender dragon so I decided to take a little break and try to build something cool. So I had to go into the mines to actually get some materials for this build first. I was thinking like a cool medieval styled fountain made of stone bricks since now I had that silk touch pickaxe it would be really easy to get stone. So I started to get carried away because there was just so many ores and I found a mine shaft in like 600 different ravines. Like the cave that I was in was literally so big. There was just so much to explore, I got tons of gold and tons of iron. While we're waiting for me to go mining, I just want to say thank you for sticking around this far in the video. I really appreciate each and every one of you guys who watch my videos. I eventually came across a vein of diamonds and I looked around and there was nobody near me so I started mining it up, but little did I know. Hello motherfucker. There were some cave spiders nearby. And all of a sudden boss music started playing and I was really confused. Cave spiders started popping out out of nowhere and I didn't know what to do. I was starting to get worried because I was getting really low. Only two hearts left. And I was about to die, I had to dip. There was no way I was going to die. I've come close to dying so many times in this series. Sitting at half a heart right now with poison. I'm trying to dig away into a little hole. Try to make myself safe. And that was a really close call, and I pretty much just sat in here until I regened all the way back. All I wanted to do was just go mining, man, just get some materials for my build. It was a pretty normal day on day 42. I went upstairs, and there was Bruh. another mob inside of my house. What is up with all these mobs spawning inside there? I swear I have enough light. Once I got that taken care of, I got all the stone that I got from my mining trip, and I started turning them into stone bricks. The build I had in mind was like a uh, kind of medieval styled like fountain kind of thing and I worked on it for a couple of days and it was just a really nice refreshing stop to all the grind that I had to do. I think it looked pretty decent. I 
I was filling out the floor over here and I forgot that I crafted some lanterns earlier and I think these look really sick. The build was pretty much done. And I added some like extra leaves on the edge and it looked really cool. All I needed to do was just add the water now. I'll just put in the last bucket. Boom, right there. Let's go see what this looks like. Damn, I'm actually kind of impressed. That looks pretty good. I'm pretty proud of myself for making that. I think it adds a nice addition to the front of our house. We've had this iron sword for pretty much the whole series and it was about to break, so I think it was time for a change. I crafted up a diamond sword, a fresh new diamond sword, and we were going to go enchant it because I had 38 levels right now. Sharpness 4. Okay. That better be good. There better be something else. I can't... Bruh. Oh, of course, it's only sharpness 4. I mean, that's still pretty good, but I'm, I was hoping for like fire aspect or like someone else, unbreaking maybe. I decided to go enchant some books to see if I can get anything good that I can combine with. Long story short, I didn't get a single book that was gonna be good on my sword. I decided to go back to grinding out sticks and upgrading my Fletcher. This guy was almost a master, so I just kept on grinding. Let's see what kind of arrow we get. Also by this terrible bow who's unbreaking too. Bruh. Arrow of invisibility, that's like the worst one. Come on, dude. That's great. We're gonna use it a lot. I also got to upgrade my armor to a master as well. All I had to do is buy this single shield, and there we go, our armor should be a master. I just reset this trade thing real quick. Alright, there we go, master. Now we have the full diamond set. I went back and I had more levels, so I'm gonna do some more books, and I didn't get anything good again, dude. I just want, like, fire aspect or something, bro. Like, seriously, what is this? Well, I forgot I had tons of emeralds in my chests back home. So I took those, and I got myself a full diamond set of armor. I looked very swag. You stupid. Make it easier on us, I had a cleric villager, so now we can just buy ender pearls instead of farming out endermen. So I just bought a full amount of ender pearls as I could, and that was only 12, sadly. The next thing that I needed to do was to get a bow, so I went and go crafted a bow, and I was gonna check the enchantments on it. Dang, okay, power 4, that could be very good. I'm gonna need one more level though to get that enchantment. I went back into the nether because I also needed a blaze rod so then I could actually make um, eyes of ender so then we could actually get to the end because that's like the only thing that we're actually missing right now. So I explored and explored and came across a fortress finally. There's actually a lot of chests and there was some decent loot. It was mainly just gold and I had five gold chest plates in my inventory. It was crazy. That fortress was pretty short but not too long after I found another one in the basalt delta, one of the new biomes. It was actually really cool. There were a lot of blazes and wither skeletons here, so I was pretty lucky. I'm pretty sure there was also a spawner here too. But yeah, I was I was pretty worried because I almost came close to dying, kind of. I'd like half hearts. I went back home and I stored back all of my golden chest plates in my chests and all the things and loot that I got from my nether expedition. Now that I had enough levels, I could finally enchant my bow. See what it is? Wow, power 4 on breaking 3 flame. That's actually really good, okay. Yeah, that's one of the best bows we could have gotten. That's that's really lucky. Let's go. We have an insane bow now. And arrows aren't going to be a problem because we have a Fletcher, so I can just trade for arrows. Right there, super easy. Two stacks of arrows. We're pretty much set now for our loadout. We have a good bow, a good sword, and a good armor. Now I just crafted up some Eyes of Ender and I had 18 Eyes of Ender. We were pretty much set to go kill the Ender Dragon at this point. It was day 50 and we finally made it to the halfway point of this series. To celebrate, I decided to craft up a cake because I had all the ingredients already. So I crafted up the cake and placed it on this nether brick thing on my second floor. I thought it gave you an achievement when you ate it, but I guess it doesn't. I don't know why I thought that. But yeah, epic, we made it to day 50, finally. I also forgot I had so many bones, and I realized that there was a freaking wolf inside my cow pen. So I decided to tame that. And there we go, now we have our own pet dog. And that pretty much wraps it up for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and thank you so much for sticking around to the end of the video. The support on the last episode has been insane, so I knew I had to get this video out as soon as possible for you guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.
What is up fellow Minecraft fans, today I bring to you part 3 of the Minecraft Hardcore series. I know you've all been waiting for this, and I'm just trying to make it the highest quality I can possible for releasing this to you guys. Last time I asked for a goal of 50 likes for part 3, and you guys completely smashed it. I think we're at like 160 or something right now. So I've never asked for a like goal of 50 before, but this time I'm going to break that record. I'm going to ask for 100 likes on this video for part 4. I've never asked for anything higher than 100 before, so this is going to be the first time I've ever asked for this high of a like goal. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this video. So, Minecraft came out with yet another update. We are now in the 20w22a. How much did they update this game, bro? It's crazy. And I also decided to go check back to that tower because this comment told me to shout out to you and it apparently will give us lots of deals with our villagers so I went ahead and did that. I was expecting them to be pretty hard but it was actually quite easy to defeat them all because my gear was godly now. I also got some pumpkin seeds while I was out there and that was pretty nice. And I put that banner right in the front of our house I don't know where else to put it. Walked into the village and I saw this bar in the top and it said raid, so I'm guessing I'm doing it right. It was pretty much just the same thing as that post, except there is more of those guys. And those axe people did so much damage, the guys that were holding axes. And yeah, I was I was pretty bad at this, but it was it was pretty fun. It was pretty fun, not gonna lie. My aiming though was pretty horrendous. And I'm just gonna speed this up because this is not the most interesting thing to watch. And yeah, my aiming with a bow is not the greatest thing in the world, as you can tell from this clip. And there were multiple waves. There were so many people in the distance. I just saw them all coming toward me. It was pretty scary. There were so many of them in that big bow looking thing. It even turned into night and my aim was still very bad. I was trying to hit this witch for like ages, dude. I just gave up and went to go kill her with the sword. One kid left. I thought this was the end, but it was the start of another round. How many rounds are there, dude? If there are more rounds after this, they really need to nerf this thing, dude. It took me like 20 straight minutes. Not too long after, though, I finished up with the last raider. There we go. Hero of the village. I finally completed it. I'm so thankful that no creepers came and like exploded me, that would have been really bad. Our armor dude died though, so that's a rip in the chat, because like he was he was one of my best villagers. No cap bro, he had all the best armor for me and now I can't even trade with them anymore, this was so sad. Our Fletcher also got zombified, but good thing I know how to cure this, I think you need a weakness potion and a golden apple. So I came back later with exactly what I needed and I think this worked because it made that weird sound, so I'm pretty sure that worked. So yeah, we'll come back later and see what happens. I also just crafted up a grindstone and I put my diamond leggings in there because projectile protection 1 was just a pretty bad <laughs> enchant. So I enchanted again and I got unbreaking 3. Only unbreaking 3 on a level 3 enchant. I did it all over again and this time I got protection 4 also, so that was pretty lucky. And I spent the rest of the day just trying to get a new armor and now we have to deal with this all over again. Starting from zero. I went back home and threw away all my axes and just sorted out my inventory a little bit because we were ready to go fight the dragon. But real quick, I wanted to just disenchant my helmet and then let's see what we could get. Hopefully it's better. Nice. Okay, it's definitely better, but I don't know about the fire protection on there. I don't think that's going to be that useful, but it's, it's probably better than what we had before. I packed up all of my stuff and got my eyes of Ender and we started heading out toward where it led me. I came across another village while I was going to where the eyes led me, and these villagers honestly are pretty useless at this point because like, I don't know, there's nothing there that would really help us. I looked at the chest and I just let them all be and did not disturb them so they could live on with their happy villager lives. Came across another ruined portal and also these don't have that good of loot for us right now, mainly just gold, which we don't really need at all. In the chest there was a mending shovel a silk touch shovel, and a curse of vanishing hoe. I didn't know what that did, but it was red, so I was, I don't know, that looked kind of scary, probably not good. 
Also found a swamp biome, and there was a slime that I killed in there. So now we have some slime balls or whatever we need it for. Maybe a sticky piston. I don't know when we're ever gonna need a sticky piston, but yeah, we found some slime. Pretty nice. Eventually, the eyes led me to only one area. So I think this was the spot where the portal was. I walked many days. It took a long time, but we eventually got there. And the eyes were all leading to about the same spot. I was excited to see what the stronghold had for us. So I started mining down, and the hero of the village effect was kind of a waste at this point. And I ended up falling down in this hole, in this tiny ravine, and I got really scared, but there were bricks above me. So I think I was chilling, I was almost there. Eventually made in the stronghold, and I found this weird looking dungeon type it's thing, me. and there was oh, invisible chill, chill. spiders. I didn't even know invisible spiders were in this game, I was confused, why were, why were they here? How did they get invisible in the first place? Blue was pretty bad. I found one of these libraries, and this stuff is all boring, I'm just gonna cut it, no one wants to see me loot boring stuff. Yeah, there just wasn't that much, to be honest, in any of these strongholds. Minecraft needs to do a stronghold update, like, it just doesn't feel good. Um, a Protection 3 Curse of Binding book, another red enchantment looked bad, and just some books and paper. I sorted out my inventory when I found the room with the portal, and I think I was pretty much ready to jump on in. I also forgot to record myself putting in the actual eyes, so that was kind of dumb. The moment of truth, it was time to jump inside of the portal. So I'm just gonna let you guys watch me fight the end dragon. I don't think there's really much stuff to say right here, but yeah, enjoy. And there we go, just like that, I have beaten the game. There really isn't much stuff to do now in Minecraft Hardcore. We beat the final boss of the entire game, the credits are rolling through. I think maybe I should probably go outside now, or like read a book or something, I've been playing Minecraft for so long. The game is over, you guys can, you guys can leave the video now, it's all over. I beat the game, let's go. I'm just joking, there's still more stuff to do, I think, at least. You guys should probably put some suggestions in the comments below, but yeah, we got right back into our world. Next up, I wanted to take over the village that was near my house, so first, I was gonna have to make some minor improvements. I wanted to build a wall around the whole entire village. This took so long, it took many days, well, more like two days, actually. And I also ended up building this like weird gate-looking thing. I mean, I think it's pretty cool. I finally ended up finishing up the wall, and I think it looked pretty nice all the way around. It took a really long time though, and I had to go to bed because it was finally getting dark. And the next day I just spent putting torches all around the whole village to make sure mobs would not spawn. And in the front of the village, like where I would enter, I made like a little opened gate, kind of. And I think it, it looked pretty good. I liked the old like iron bars with the stone brick wall design, so I tried it again, I looked back, and it looked pretty good. I added some pathway at the bottom just to make it blend in a little bit more to the village. I also went to my nearby desert and I was getting some sand because this comment said that cartographers are epic because you can just get glass panes and it's one of the best ways to get emeralds and that's exactly what I did. Next day I went and got a cartographer villager. 
And to trade him a bunch of paper, I had to make a huge sugarcane farm, and that's what I did also. And sugarcane farms look pretty sick, so yeah, I, I made it pretty, pretty big in the front area of the village. It was that time again, and I went to my cow pen and just started slaughtering every cow for their epic meat. I didn't really like how this farm was just shown in the middle of the village, so I decided to tear it down. And the villager decided to jump right in front of me, and I, I just smacked my shovel on him, and it was not good. I laid out like a basic plan for a villager house that I was planning on building, and I think it looks pretty good, maybe a bit too small, but I don't know. On day 69, I continued building the house, and I wanted this house to be kind of like a villager breeding area where I could just breed a bunch of villagers, um, and I don't know, I, I, it's a pretty simple design. You guys can, like, I don't you guys can't really follow along, actually, never mind, it's probably really fast. But yeah, this took, like, two days. And I also expanded out to this little area of the village, it's, it's gonna be like an industrial area where I can build some machines and stuff over here, like a super smelter, which is I was gonna work on. After many mumbo jumbo tutorials later, I got this really simple super smelter going and I was about to test it out to see if it worked with sand, because I wanted to get glass panes. And it seemed like it was working pretty well. I was getting some glass out pretty fast, it was double the speed of a single furnace. And yeah, these gave me a really good income of emeralds and this was definitely going to be the most easiest way for me to get emeralds right now. Next up, I wanted to improve my armor and my swords and stuff, but to do that I wanted to get a mending villager first, just so I don't have to like worry about repairing it or anything. And this villager really didn't want me to get mending, dude. I literally sat here for so long trying to get mending, and he just didn't want to give it to me. It was, I, I'm pretty sure the chance is like 1 in 30 to get mending, and I swear I've done this like a hundred times. Like it even, like, it was just, it was dark outside and I just had to go to bed. I couldn't do it on this day. The next day, I went back, and I gave it another try. At the end of this day, my axe even broke, and I was just sick of it at this point. This villager really did not want to give it to me. On day 74, I just did some peaceful buildings, I just wanted to take a break from all this mending villager stuff, and I would try it again later. This house was actually coming out to look pretty nice. I went back to the villager and I did some spins for good luck, and we actually got mending, finally. Dude, it probably took me about 30 minutes of just straight up sitting down and just breaking lecterns, it was dumb. It was finally day 75, and we finally made it to the very end. And I went to go enchant some books, and long story short, we didn't get a single good enchant. Also, I found an egg, and this happened. I didn't know this was even possible, but apparently you can get up to four chickens in a single egg. I swear I've never even seen like myself getting two chickens in a single egg. I never knew that was even a thing. That's kind of cool that we got it on day 75. I finished up the day with harvesting up some sugarcane, and I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone who has been watching this series, because it's been one of the most popular series on my channel by far. So thank you guys, and for all the Fortnite fans that I have from before, don't worry, I am not quitting Fortnite, I am just taking a little break, you know, playing some other games, because Minecraft has been a ton of fun recently. And I've also been playing some Terraria, but I don't know if that's, I'm really good at making videos on that. You guys can just let me know in the comments what I should do. So yeah, last time, I set a like goal of 50 likes for the uh, last episode, and you guys completely destroyed that and hit we hit like 150 or something, somewhere, somewhere like that. So today, I'm going to be going for the highest like goal I've ever asked. Today, I'm going to be asking for 100 likes. Can we hit 100 likes for part for the finale? So yeah, I hope you guys all enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys next time. Let's just get straight into this. Part 4 is finally out after the long wait. I hope you guys enjoy, because I really tried to make this video the best it could be to celebrate the finale of this series. And also, if you guys really want me to continue this, just tell me in the comments, and I might consider it. Make sure you guys have subscribed if you haven't already, because we recently just hit 2,000 subscribers thanks to all y'all, and I really appreciate it. Without further ado, let's just get straight into the video. Enjoy. Day 76. And I was walking home from my village when I spotted a charged creeper. I haven't seen one of these in ages, bro. I, don't, I completely forgot that they were actually in the game. I was pretty scared, but I wanted to approach it anyway. Because I, I had good armor, and I think I was chilling. There were actually two creepers next to each other. I wanted the charged one to explode, because I'm pretty sure it makes a big explosion. And yeah, the normal creeper killed the charged creeper, so I didn't really see anything cool. 
I realized that I completely forgot about making an anvil, so I did that real quick, and I didn't really know where to put it. Looked around, and I decided to put it next to my enchantment area. I wanted to go finish up my villager house today, so that's exactly what I did. Enjoy this little time lapse of me finishing up the villager house. Getting a villager inside the house was kind of annoying because I had to trap one inside a minecart, but I did it eventually, and now we have our very first villager inside our brand new house, which is locked with gates. I got our second villager in pretty soon, and I just started throwing food on the ground for them, hoping that they would breed. I'm not really sure how this works, but yeah, I kind of just did what Wiki told me to do. I checked back on them the next day, and it looks like they were doing something in there. Yeah, I'll just leave them to that. I also cleared out this little area for a campground that I was thinking about making. I saw it on YouTube and it looked really cool, so I wanted to make it right in this little cleared area over here. So I went down to go mine for some netherites because I completely forgot that this was even a thing. And after a little bit I found some and I was using the TNT exploding strategy. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It looked like it worked pretty well. I only ended up finding two pieces of netherite while I was down in the underground nether. I also created like a little storage area next to my portal so I can store all this netherite that I was getting from exploding all of this stuff. So I went to go check up on the villagers and we finally had our baby villager. I don't really know what to turn him into first, maybe like another librarian, I'm not even sure. I was just messing around and just seeing what I could get and I got efficiency 4 literally on my second try. So that's pretty insane, I'm definitely gonna go lock that so I gotta go get some stuff to trade with him. So I ended up getting one efficiency for enchanted book. After a long days of hard work, I ended up getting a couple different books, three efficiencies and two mendings. Okay, this is stupid, but I didn't record this part, but pretty much I got a new diamond pickaxe and I enchanted it and it was efficiency four already on it. So that was super lucky. And yeah, I just applied mending and now I had a really good pickaxe. So I had to go check back on the villagers and now they had two babies. So it's actually really good. And I didn't even know that was possible. Uh, that's pretty cool. So I had a comment telling me to get an Ocean Explorer map and explore one of those monuments, but I know those are pretty hard and I don't know if I was ready for them yet because I'm pretty bad at the game, so I ended up getting a Woodland Explorer map. Alright, well, um, it's been a couple days and I looked it up and I realized it was way too far and I didn't have an elytra yet, so I didn't really want to walk all the way over there. So I kind of just walked for like a day or two and then kind of wasted my time. So I went back into the end because I really wanted to get an elytra now because I wanted to go exploring and stuff. It would be so much easier with a pair of wings. Yeah, I collected up some chorus fruits. It was really satisfying. And yeah, pretty much I was just building paths and using ender pearls to just try to find an end city. It took a really long time and I added arrows on the ground to make sure I knew uh, how to get back. And this was probably one of the most boring parts, like, ever. But after a little while of exploring, I finally came across one. It was one right there, I used to end up to get a little bit closer. And I was pretty lucky, because there was a, like, one of those flying ships on my first one, so I got in a guaranteed elytra, I don't know how rare those are. Alright, and this is one of the reasons why this video took so long for me to get out. So pretty much what happened was, I don't know, I don't really know what happened, I think I clicked record, so I have a hockey for recording, and I, I think I clicked it by accident once, so pretty much, I'm, I'm, what I'm trying to explain is pretty much, I didn't record all the good parts, and then I ended up recording all the parts I didn't want to record, so I just had a bunch of footage of just me, like, looking around, and I didn't clip anything, like, finding the elytra, I didn't clip, finding all this, like, loot or anything, and I was just so annoyed when I figured out that I just didn't record a single thing. Yeah, that kind of messed me up, so I'm sorry, but I don't have any footage for any of that, and I, don't, I didn't really know what to do, so that was pretty stupid. Oh yeah, also it didn't record me going back into the portal. Right here, I'm setting my inventory up, and I was gonna, I was about to go back in the portal, and then I just, I clicked start, but it ended up ending it, so that's like kind of what happened. So right now, it's just a black screen, because I didn't record any of this. But yeah, at least now we have an Elytra. So now we're back to normal recording, hopefully it don't mess up anymore. So I went back and I saw an iron golem inside of my villager house, so I think this is a good sign, I'm not really sure. 
So um, I wanted to make a slime farm, so I went over to chunkbase.com and found a slime chunk right next to my house, right in this area. And I thought this was a good spot to start building a slime farm. Oh, and if you guys are wondering how I made the chunk borders show, you just press F3 and G at the same time, and then you can see the chunk borders. So I went over to a nearby ocean to collect some kelp for the soul sand elevator I was going to be making to get up and down to the slime farm. And yeah, it was really it was a really satisfying sound, but also pretty loud. So now that I had my kelp and my soul sand, I went back down and I dug a little hole to around Y10. I don't really know how deep you have to make these. And I placed a soul sand there, and I kind of forgot how to make a soul sand elevator. I think you're supposed to put, like, a normal block there that kelp can grow on first. Yeah, I kind of fixed it right there. I put a normal block, and then I just have to put kelp all the way in, all the way to the very top, so I could turn every block into a source water block. So then the soul sand elevator would actually work. If you guys want to learn how to make these, just look up how to make a soul sand elevator. They're pretty simple to make. And right when it's I finished stupid. it, people came around and just blew it up, so that was great. I had to go rebuild the side of my house. So I went back down and I broke all the kelp, replaced the cobble with a soul sand, and the water elevator works. Let's go. Maybe sometime I'll put stuff on the outside so it's not just stone that you have to look at. But yeah, that would be pretty cool. Boom. Bam. Bop. Bruh, for real though, where's phase at, dude? My aim is way too good for this game. Alright, next I just continued mining out a huge area in that chunk where my slime farm was gonna be. I didn't really know what I was doing. I kind of just remembered how I made my slime farm from like 10 months ago. But I also came across some diamonds, which was pretty cool. I know I should have waited for fortune, but honestly, I kind of just was too lazy to do that. I just mined it up anyway. Yeah, it was six diamonds, and then I just continued mining. This was a pretty big moment in this world. I picked up some gunpowder and paper and I made my first set of fireworks. So I knew I was going to have to get a creeper farm going so I could get some more fireworks, but right now I only had 48 with the leftover gunpowder that I had. Also, I realized that digging out that huge area for the slime farm was going to take too long, so I wanted to make a beacon, but first I needed an iron farm. So to build that I had, I, I gathered up all these resources that you can kind of copy if you want to build this along with me. And I'm using Waddle's, um, I think it was 1.15 and above design and I think it works pretty well. Oh, and I forgot to mention this, but we are currently now in 1.16.1 because 1.16 just released, so that is very epic. There is so much stuff I want to do in this video, I don't know if I'm going to fit it all in within the 100 days. So if you guys really want me to continue this series, just let me know. The next step was I had to get a zombie that could pick up an item, and I finally found one that actually could pick up an item, so I had to keep that one safe. This was one of the most annoying things to do, but I had to get a zombie up all the way into the iron farm and make him fall inside of the hole. This took like, literally like 5 minutes, it shouldn't have taken that long. But yeah, eventually I finally got him inside there. Next up I needed to get 3 villagers inside of the farm. So I went inside of the house and trapped one of them. But literally, it just wouldn't let me leave. The iron golem was just sitting there blocking the exit, just looking at me like, Bro, let me leave. Let me get out of here. I need to take this villager out, bro. Like, this was literally so annoying. There was just way too many villagers in here. It was like an overpopulation. They were just all getting in the way. I, mean, I couldn't, like, push them out or anything. This was just getting crazy. Eventually, it turns night, and all the villagers kind of moved away. So I actually had room to push this guy out. One dude almost escaped. So this was my plan, pretty much. I wanted to get him out here and then trap him inside a boat so that I could ride him all the way back over to my base. It was a really annoying process, but I think it, it should work. It should work pretty well. It'll just take a long time. I almost suffocated my villager like 10 times. How is he not dead, bro? I'm such a bad person. <laughs> but yeah, off I go. Over to the iron farm. This was also another really annoying part. I had to push the villager up using a rail, and he fell down like four times, so it was really annoying, but eventually I got him inside his little area. Took a while, but I got the last villager in. There we go, he just jumps right into his bed. I think I should be done now, this iron farm should be 100% working. There's actually one more thing that I forgot, which was putting in the water at the very top, like the spawning platform where the iron golems would spawn. But once I finish up that, everything should be good, and hopefully I will start earning some iron, which we can use in a lot of builds, and also part of the beacon. I'm not going to make the whole beacon out of iron, by the way. I'm going to put some emerald blocks in there too. I also got an Unbreaking 3 Librarian, which is pretty nice. 
And now since I had that, I could finally enchant my elytras with Unbreaking 3 and Mending. So now I had maxed out elytras. The next day I went to go buy some armor from the Armor 2.0 because my first one actually died. And I wanted to buy these so I can combine them and try to make like some actually good armor since my armor was breaking. So I combined the boots and got Protection 3. And then I enchanted some books and then I actually got some good stuff for my sword. There was a fire aspect 2, loyalty 3, quick charge 1, but I was only going to be using the fire aspect, and it had a sweeping edge 3, so I was going to combine those all into my sword. Nice. I also went and grabbed my boots again, and I forgot that I didn't combine them all the way, so I combined the two protection 2s to make a protection 3, then combined that protection 3 with my other one, and got protection 4 and depth strider 1. And the final thing I did was add menting to my boots. So I went down to go check on the slimes, and there was actually some slimes in here. I wanted to use the slime for a little thing I was going to work on for the final 100th day. It was going to be a surprise, so you guys better stick around through the whole video to see what that surprise is. And I also had to go in the nether to grab some quartz for the thing I was building on the final day as well. I think I came out with a good amount of quartz for this project. So over here, I built like a little- oh my god, bro, I haven't seen these guys in a long time. Are these like phantoms? I'm pretty sure they come if you don't sleep in like every like three days or something, or something like that. Guess I gotta go back. Alright, well anyway, as I was saying, I built this little path over here that connects over to our little slime farm area. And then if you go this way, there's a little house over here with just a mysterious little button. So if you stand on this block and hit that button, you drop down into a secret little chamber, which is going to be my trophy room area. I had this comment actually to suggest me make a trophy room, so yeah, thanks to you, I built that, and it looks pretty cool. I'm gonna be adding some cool things in there as we go on. The last days, I just spent working on the little trophy room slash museum room, and I think it was actually turning out real nice. There was lots of resource gathering and just grind involved in this. Wow, it is actually day 100. We made it all the way through. At the very beginning of the series, I didn't think I was actually going to survive all the way through day 100. I'm going to take a bite out of my victory cake. I think we made that on day 50. I actually don't remember. But yeah, I can't believe we've gone this far. We built this cool little fountain. I think this was on like somewhere near day 40. I really don't remember any of this. It's been a while and this series has been tons of fun making. We have our little farm underneath our little house. And over here, we have our trophy room. When you drop down, you can see that I did a little bit of extra work. I added some, like, lava pillars on the side, and I think that looked pretty nice. But most importantly, the dragon egg, our first little treasure slash monument kind of thing. It, this place looks really ugly right now, to be honest, but, like, I don't know. It's gonna get better once I keep on building it. I just don't have enough resources right now. Oh, I just accidentally hit that thing when I was eating my steak. Well, yeah, um, I really hope you guys enjoyed this series. I had a ton of fun making it. And if you guys really want me to continue this, just let me know in the comments down below. I need to see tons of support though, because this video probably took me the longest out of the other three episodes to make. This video took a really long time. There's just so much building and stuff to do. Well, anyways, if you guys want me to continue this, just tell me in the comments, like I said. And I hope you guys have an epic day. I'll see you guys next time. Hey, Dad, turn this shit up.